Hello. In this lecture, we'll study solving trigonometric equations. So we're going to solve equations in sine, cosine, or tangent over the standard interval 0 to 2 pi. Then we'll use periodic properties of these functions to find all solutions to such equations, not just between 0 and 2 pi. And then we'll work from there to solve trigonometric functions in general. So we're going to solve things like what are the thetas for which sine of theta is a half, or for which x is 2 cos squared x minus 1 equal to 0, or for which x is, is the tangent of 2x equal to 1. For example, let's find all theta between 0 and 2 pi so that sine of theta is 1 half. We're looking for angles that correspond on the unit circle with a y coordinate, because we're using a sine, of 1 half. And there are two such points on the unit circle. With a y coordinate of 1 half, we could have x coordinates of plus or minus root 3 over 2. These correspond to the angles, which are standard reference angles, of pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. So the only solutions between 0 and 2 pi for which the sine of theta is a half are pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Now let's find solutions to 2 cos squared x minus 1 equals 0. Again, x is between 0 and 2 pi. So first, let's solve it for cosine x. If we start with 2 cos squared x minus 1 equals 0, we can add 1 to both sides, divide by 2, and then we find that the cosine of x is plus or minus root 2 over 2. Now within the unit circle, we're looking for angles, which we're representing with x, that give us a cosine or a horizontal coordinate of either positive root 2 over 2 or negative root 2 over 2. And there are four such angles, pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. So these are the angles where the corresponding part has x coordinate, horizontal coordinate. It's a little unfortunate that we also used x to represent the variable in our cosine function, and therefore x represents an angle. But the points on the unit circle whose horizontal coordinate is plus or minus root 2 over 2 have corresponding angles, pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. Let's find all solutions to the equation sine theta equals 1 half. Now earlier, we found that the only solutions from 0 to 2 pi were pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, but now we're asked to find all solutions. We're going to rely on the periodicity of the sine function. The period of the sine function is 2 pi. So if we have solutions pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, we can get other solutions, like pi over 6 plus 2 pi or pi over 6 plus 4 pi, or pi over 6 plus 6 pi, etc. We could also do 5 pi over 6 plus 2 pi, 4 pi, or 6 pi, and such. And we could subtract 2 pi, or 4 pi, and so forth. So how are we going to represent all solutions? It's pi over 6 or 5 pi over 6, each plus 2 pi times an integer k. This integer k might be negative. Don't be fooled by the fact that we have a plus there. That doesn't mean k is positive. k can be any integer at all. So on the left, we have pi over 6 plus 2k times pi. So this could be plus 0 pi, 2 pi, 4 pi, or minus 2 pi, minus 4 pi, minus 6 pi, and so forth. This is a nice, concise way to represent all possible solutions. The solutions that are between 0 and 2 pi plus arbitrary multiples of 2 pi. Another example, let's find all the solutions to 2 cos squared x minus 1 equals 0. Now earlier we found the only solutions between 0 and 2 pi are pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. So therefore, how are we going to find all solutions? We could take the one solution of pi over 4 and add 2 times an integer times pi, so some number of full rotations. If k is negative, that's fine. Any integer k works. But we could do the same thing to the solution 3 pi over 4, or the solution 5 pi over 4, or the solution 7 pi over 4. So ultimately, all possible solutions are given by either pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, or 7 pi over 4, but for any of those, you can also add 2k pi, where k is any integer. So in general, if you want to solve trigonometric equations that are going to start to look a little more complicated, if all you have is the sine cosine tangent of x or theta, for example, the ones we've done so far, Find solutions in 0 to 2 pi or for 0 to pi if you're working with tangent, because the period of sine or cosine is 2 pi, whereas the period of the tangent function is just pi. Then all solutions can be given by adding 
some multiple of the period, which is some multiple k of 2 pi for sine or cosine, or some multiple k of just pi for tangent. Remember, the period of the tan function is pi, not 2 pi. However, if you have something like the sine of 2x or the cosine of x over 3, your first step is going to be to do what's called a change of variables. Invent a new variable to be whatever is inside those parentheses, theta equals 2x or theta equals x over 3. Then this new variable is something you can solve using the techniques we've already done, because now you just have the tangent or the cosine of theta. So get all solutions for theta, but then change back to the original variable and see what your solutions look like. For example, let's find all possible solutions to the tangent of 2x equals 1, and then ask which ones are somehow in between 0 and 2 pi. So the first thing we're going to do is say, we're taking the tangent of something that isn't just a variable. So replace it with a new variable. Declare theta to be 2x, so our equation becomes tan theta equals 1. Tangent has a period of pi, so let's just look for thetas in between 0 and pi where the tangent is 1. The only such solution is theta to be pi over 4. So since tangent has a period of pi, and pi over 4 is the only solution in one period, all possible solutions to tan theta equals 1 are given by theta to be pi over 4 plus some number k times pi. But now let's go back to our original variable x. Instead of theta to be pi over 4 plus k times pi, theta being 2x tells me that 2x is pi over 4 plus k times pi, and now we can solve for x by dividing everything by 2. So which x solve this? All such solutions are found by pi over 8 plus k times pi over 2. So we conclude that all possible solutions to the tangent of 2x equals 1 are x's of this form, pi over 8 plus k pi over 2. But now we can ask the question, which of those x's are in between 0 and 2 pi? So we found that all possible x's were of the form pi over 8 plus k pi over 2, and now we're going to check which values of k will take that general solution and end up with something in between 0 and 2 pi. So we're going to start substituting values of k and see what happens. If k is 0, we get pi over 8. That is a valid solution. That is in between 0 and 2 pi. If k equals 1, this all simplifies down to 5 pi over 8. That is still in between 0 and 2 pi. For k equals 2, we simplify down to 9 pi over 8. That is still in between 0 and 2 pi. For k equals 3, we're still OK. But for k equals 4, we would have pi over 8 plus 2 pi. That's bigger than 2 pi, and we can stop. Also, for any negative value of k, you would not find a valid solution. If we come back here and let k equal minus 1, we'd have pi over 8 minus pi over 2. Since pi over 2 is bigger than pi over 8, the difference would be negative, and we're not allowing negative solutions. So what have we found in this example? The only solutions to tangent of 2x equals 1, where x is between 0 and 2 pi, are x equals pi over 8, 5 pi over 8, 9 pi over 8, and 13 pi over 8. And again, our general process here was replace the expression inside your trigonometric function with a new variable, find all solutions for that, and then change back to your original and test which ones are in the relevant interval of solutions. So another example. Let's solve the cosine of x over 3 is equal to 0, and we'll find all the x's between 0 and 2 pi. Our first step is going to be to invent a new variable that is the thing we are taking the cosine of. So now we're just going to solve cosine of theta equals 0. In between 0 and 2 pi, there are two such angles that have a cosine of 0, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. So therefore, we can find all solutions to cos theta equals 0 pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi times k, since 2 pi is the period of the cosine function. Now we can change both of these back to our original variable x. So instead of theta equals pi over 2 plus 2k pi, we would say x over 3 equals pi over 2 plus 2k pi. To solve this for x, just multiply by 3. So x is 3 pi over 2 plus 6k times pi. But that's only half the problem. That came from theta equals pi over 2 plus 2k pi. 
we also have this side here, we do the same steps and we find that x can also equal 9 pi over 2 plus 6k pi. Now if we check which values of k produce x in between 0 and 2 pi, observe that we're multiplying k by 6 pi. So if k is equal to 1, this is way too big. It's much bigger than 2 pi. And if k is negative, overall this is going to be rather negative. But k equals 0 gives us x equals 3 pi over 2. That is in between 0 and 2 pi. On this side, however, k equals 1, 2, 3, and so forth are far too large. k equals minus 1 is still negative. And k equals 0 gives us 9 pi over 2. That's 4 and a half pi. That is bigger than 2 pi. So the only solution is x equals 3 pi over 2, subject to the restriction that x had to be between 0 and 2 pi. If, for example, we were looking for x's between 0 and 4 pi, then 9 pi over 2 would still not be a solution. It would be too large. But depending on the range of x's you're looking for, you will find different valid solutions here. So if an equation involves one of your other trig functions, cosecant, secant, or cotangent, generally you just want to change it into something involving sine, cosine, or tangent because we have inverse functions for those that we've already worked out. Some sources will develop arc cosecant, arc secant, arc cotangent functions, but it's not especially common. So for example, let's solve 4 times the secant of theta plus 6 equals negative 2, and specifically we're looking for solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So let's replace secant theta with 1 over cosine theta and solve this for cosine. So from 4 secant theta plus 6 equals negative 2, we replace secant with 1 over cosine, giving us 4 over the cosine of theta equals negative 8 once we subtract the 6 over to the other side. We can then cross multiply. 4 equals negative 8 times the cosine of theta, and dividing by negative 8 gives us the cosine of theta is minus 1 half. So now the problem has become, for which angles between 0 and 2 pi is the cosine minus 1 half? This is pretty easy to solve. It's 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. Next up, a classic example you see in books around the world, a quadratic equation involving trigonometric functions. Let's solve cos squared theta equals 3 cosine theta, and we're only looking for solutions where theta is between 0 and 2 pi. We're going to approach this as if we were looking at x squared equals 3x. Just replace cos theta equals x, and this is exactly what you get. Now, if x squared equals 3x, you can subtract 3x, factor out an x, and conclude that x must equal either 0 or 3. But x was taking the place of cosine theta. So in our original equation, you can do the same thing. Subtract 3 cos theta, factor out cos theta, and conclude that the cosine of theta is either 0 or 3. Now in between 0 and 2 pi, for which values of theta will cosine theta equal 0? There are two of them, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And for which values of theta will cosine theta equal 3? Never, because cosine of theta is always between plus or minus 1. So the only solutions here are pi over 2, 3 pi over 2. Our cosine equation has fewer solutions in a sense than the polynomial one does. The polynomial equation x equals 3 was a possibility, but since x is representing cosine theta here, cosine theta can never equal 3, and that's not really going to give you any more solutions. Here's another example. For which theta, again between 0 and 2 pi, let's solve 2 sine squared theta plus sine theta minus 1 equals 0. This is just like a polynomial replacing sine theta with x, 2x squared plus x minus 1. So can we factor this polynomial? Setting it equal to zero, by the way, if nothing else, you could use the quadratic formula to find the roots and therefore factors, but this does factor as 2x minus 1 times x plus 1. Replacing x with sine theta, this gives us 2 sine theta minus 1 times sine theta plus 1. So we set this equal to zero and conclude that either 2 sine theta minus 1 is zero or sine theta plus 1 is zero. In other words, the sine of theta could be a half, and that happens from 0 to 2 pi at angles pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, or possibly the sine of theta is minus 1, and in the interval from 0 to 2 pi, that only happens at theta equals 3 pi over 2. So as I stated earlier in the inverse trig section, solving equations like this, it's really helpful to be very familiar with your standard reference angles and to understand how sine and cosine look on the unit circle. 
This will help you get these solutions much faster and more reliably. But back to this problem, the solutions that we found are theta being pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, and 3 pi over 2. 